How are you doing today, sir? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to say, uh, start by saying how much I'm a fan of your work, and I think it's been a while since we've spoken, so it's really cool to sit across from you. Thank you. Um, I want to jump backwards for a second and say, uh, can you listen to Joy Division on the radio, or does it tweak you out? Um, you know, I went to see it recently, and it, there's a cinema in Berlin called the Kant Kino, which is where Joy Division played their only gig in Germany, and it was 40 years since they played there. It was a week after my 40th birthday, and they, they were playing, they played Control again, so my wife and I thought, let's go and sneak in and, and watch it. I haven't seen it. For, well, we hadn't seen it for however long it was, like 14 years or 13 years or whatever. And it really had a hard effect on me this, this time, I think. I was kind of depressed for a couple of days. Not depressed, but sad, affected by it. The first time I saw it, it was so much also about us, you know, and it's changed my life and everything. But watching it with a few years, it was much more, I thought much more about Ian. You know, and it's, what a tragedy. I completely. Um, so you didn't tell anyone you were going? No, I told the I told the cinema, but um, I didn't tell anyone else. But no one no one recognized either of us. We were sitting in there. There was full of Joy Division fans. I think one guy put two and two together. That's that's amazing. Yeah. I I I don't think people there were even. Why would they think that you'd be there? Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, I suppose it's, it's, it seemed too random. Yeah, exactly. Um, jumping into why I get to talk to you. Um, uh, congrats on the movie. Um, it is. His story, their story, is so amazing. Mm -hmm. um, when you were researching the role, what were some of the things that you took away that really impressed you about uh, Pierre and their relationship? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot, really. I mean, I was lucky that Marie Curie wrote a book about him, um, a small biopic, which included all of his, you know, a lot about his childhood. And he's a really fascinating man, you know, a humanist and... His parents were incredibly modern, and he had these, you know, it wasn't about, you know, trying to be uh, about a quality equal or, or whatever. They just lived it, you know. They, it, was, it was a given that they would have mutual respect for one another. You know, the brilliance of the two of them and the respect that they had for each other and the hard, the, you know, the hard physical labor that it took to find these, you know, uh, these elements. I had no idea about that, that, you know, they had to smash up tons and tons of pitch blend in a bath, that it made them so ill. You know, it's, it, the, whole, the whole thing fascinated me. It was amazed that I did, how little I knew about it, really. I mean, I'd heard of her. I didn't really realize what a part he played in it as well. Yeah, and also, I, I didn't realize how much of a feminist he was in terms of way ahead. I mean, he was the one who insisted th that they share the noble, you know, and, and it just it, what they did. What, yeah. It's just amazing. Yeah. You know? I mean, they, they, I think in order to bring in a bit more, dy make it a bit more dynamic, we had to sort of make out that there was some conflict in there, really, which I don't think actually existed in real, in real life, you know, because otherwise it's just... Yeah, probably nauseating to watch a couple who are that perfect for one another. Well, I think also the, the fact is that um, every movie is, like, no one thinks a movie is a documentary unless you're being foolish. Right. You know, it's, this is, it's designed to tell a story and get people, yeah. you know, excited, yeah, at least for me, you know? Um, when you think back on the making of the film, uh, you filmed in Budapest, I believe, uh, what's some of the things you'll always remember from the shoot? Oh, that's tricky. Um, I sobered up in Budapest, but that's probably not for anyone to hear, but, um, um, yeah, I mean, that's the most, that's the most important thing that happened for me, obviously, but, um, it's a, it's a beautiful city, it's a daunting place as well, you know. My wife grew up in Romania, and some of these old East Bloc places, they still have a, you know, quite a heavy atmosphere, um. I find personally. You're very right. Um, but the, um, you know, the, the the skill of the of the workers there as well. The costumes were all, you know, made for, to measure for me and everything. It was really, you know, the 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 skill 
of the of the workmanship was impressive, and I enjoyed it. You know, it's a. It, we lived a lot of seasons while we were there for some reason. You know, it was it was very, you know. Four seasons in three months, it felt like as well. Very cold. Yeah, uh, I, what's funny is I was in Budapest a few days ago and uh, um, experiencing, I got to see what it's like over there when they're making movies and TV, and it's pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, and they, they shoot so much there. They're really, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, one of the things is when you're making an, a movie or a TV show, you, you never know what the schedule's gonna be. You never know what you're shooting on the first day. Um, what do you typically hope that you're going to be doing on the first day? Or do, do you like Walking, jump- you know, <laughs> leaving, he exits car, that sort of thing. <laughs> As a, you know, which often they do. I mean, I've had, you know, they do sometimes try and sort of warm you up with the less taxing things. I've had the opposite a few times, you know, where I've done... Um, I did that last year on Rebecca... My big scene with the most dialogue was the first one. And it's one of those days where you, they, they, we're going to be ready for you in an hour, and then they come in with an hour left to shoot in the day and say, <laughs> <laughs> do you think we can do this in an hour? And you're like, yeah, of course, darling, I'm a professional. Right. What's really funny is I wanted to ask you about working with Ben again. You guys did great work on Free Fire. Uh, what, uh, what do you remember about that shoot? Because that movie is fantastic. We had a good, it was amazing. You know, I wanted to work with Ben since I watched Kill List. I thought he was a really exciting director. So I was thrilled to be, and I mean, to be part of that, um, that gang, you know, was, was amazing fun. We had Brie Larson, who was, had just been Oscar nominated or was just about to win or something. And the way he worked was that we all, we all were there at all times. You never knew where the camera might might turn up. So you've got like Army and Bree lying in the dirt all day, you know, just to catch a bit of their elbow or something. It was amazing team, team spirit. We shot a sh- second movie together with my wife as well called Happy New Year, Colin Burstead, which is played only on the BBC iPlayer, but you should check that out. We, we were meant to do another big film and they took them, whatever, money, money stuff. And so he rang me up and said, I want to do a remake of Col- uh, Coriolanus. Uh, I'm going to call it Colin Uanus. <laughs> and I was like, ha ha, you know, lols. He's like, well? And I said, okay. So we, we, shot this, we shot this film in a week with amazing people. Neil Maskell from um, uh, Kill List. Uh, Hayley Squires, who was in the, um, oh, what, you know, the movie about the food banks in England, I can't remember. Um, and all this amazing, this amazing on, uh, cast of people. We saw this movie about a nightmare New Year's Eve party in a week. And it's on the BBC. It's going to come out on DVD at some point. So it's actually the third time I, I work with Ben. I definitely have not seen that. It's really good. I, uh, I'm 100% going to yeah, check gotta, it out. You've got to try and find that. It's uh, really good. 100%. Um, I definitely want to ask you, though, about working on Rebecca and maybe what it was. What For people that are familiar with the material... How has he put his unique spin on it? Well, you know, I haven't seen it, but I mean, I think it's, at first you sort of think, oh, Ben's doing, you know, a remake of a Hitchcock movie, but actually if you think of the source material, this psychological thriller is is actually right up his street. You know, if you think of Kill List or, or whatever, you know, he's really good at amping up the <laughs> the horror, you know, and the fear. And I think he's going to do something really, really great with it. I mean, I just love, I love working with him. And I love that he keeps hiring me. For 100%. Right. Uh, I, before, I'm about to run out of time with you, but I have to ask you, I'm a big fan of bank heists, like Ocean's Eleven, and I'm a, I'm a fan of the criminal underworld yeah. movie type movies. So I noticed uh, Way Down is... Uh, this is going to be great, I think. We had so much fun. It's... it's uh, it's a caper, you know, like in the old sense of a bit like the, not like the Italian job, but one of these sort of, you know, harebrained idea to get inside the National Bank of Spain using the, the uh, World Cup of whatever, 2009, whenever the Spain won the World Cup in South, in South Africa, where all the fans are going to be on the streets of Madrid watching the, the final and we're going to try and rob the bank during that. With amazing internet, Liam, Liam Cunningham, Astrid Burgess-Fisbury, Freddie Highmore, 
and Luis Tosar, a great f Spanish actor. And we had a hoot, you know, I was, I learned scuba diving, abseiling through windows and shit. It was my dream, dream job. I mean, I learned, I know I'm more well known for the crying and smoking, but I really, it's, I want to be an action hero. Uh, I really can't wait to see it. Yeah, um, it's going to be good. Congratulations on this. Uh, you did fantastic work. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure.